Well, good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Corey Hamilton, the CFO here at Landis, and i um, happy to be in front of you today. And the, um, the portion of scripture I'm going to talk about is one that Ann spoke about a few, uh, few months ago back in December at Town Hall. And as often happens, as you, you know, go back and you digest what someone says, you start to apply it to your own life and uh, just thoughts that you have. And so um, I'm going to speak about the woman at the well this morning, which is in um, the Gospel of John, chapter 4. Um, and I'm going to pick it up about verse uh, 16 here this morning, and I have a little portion that I'm going to read. And so it says, He told her, Go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said, you are right that you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands, and the man you live with now is not your husband. What you have said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place to worship must be in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation comes from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they will be the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that, Messiah, that the Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one you are speaking to, I am he. And jumping to verse 28, it says, Then leaving her water jug, the woman went back to town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? And jumping then to verse 39, Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in Jesus because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did, she said. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he did for two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. Now, like so many uh, Bible verses, there's so much to unpack from this, this uh, reading. But what I want to talk about is the woman's persistence and her role in the gospel. Because you, you, may, you need to understand that part of the reason that this woman went to the well in the middle of the day was because she was effectively an outcast of society, especially an outcast in the first century. You could put into your own words to describe her, but she would have been considered the lowest of low. She would have been ashamed of herself and a shameful person in the eyes of others. She probably had no friends, and the reason that she was coming to the well in the middle of the day was that she wanted to avoid other people and to avoid how they treated her. And that's what makes this story so amazing. I mean, you can think if Jesus was going into a new area to preach, you'd think that he might look for the most spiritual, the most pure, the most honest person to share his testimony with, to take it into the town. You know, if, if you were thinking about it in today's terms, maybe he would have appeared to Billy Graham or Martin Luther King or the Pope or a C.S. Lewis to share the good news. But that's the exact opposite of what Jesus did when he went into this town, into Jerusalem. And it's amazing that seemingly in a matter of minutes, this woman at the well went from feeling like an outcast to being someone who ran back into town telling everybody about what happened to her. And, and not only was she an outcast because of the fact that she had had so many marriages and then was living with somebody she wasn't married to, she was a woman. And in the first century, women were just a step above slaves. They weren't even allowed to testify in court. So if Jesus was to pick somebody to carry his message, 
you would think logically that this woman would be the last person he would pick. And yet that's the person that he did pick. And so I can only imagine as as she goes into town, right, shouting this message and trying to convince people of Jesus and this person that she saw, that people probably ignored her. They probably rolled their eyes at her. They probably told her to be quiet. And yet she must have been so persistent despite their comments. And and this brought me to something that that our pastor at our church spoke about uh, recently. Um, Because he spoke about the fact that in recent polling that's done by these Christian organizations, that 80% of people said that if somebody, if a friend or a loved one asks, asks them to go to church, that they probably would. That most people actually have a desire to talk about God, and yet often we shy away from it. Now, the data is clear that people don't want to feel like they're a project, right? They want to have these discussions with friends and family that they think would care about them, but that they want to have discussions about God. And so that, that left me thinking about the fact that if God could use this woman at the well to, to really carry his message forward, if Jesus chose her to carry his message forward, what does that really mean about the rest of us? It means that no matter where we are in life, no matter what our situation is, no matter what we've done in the past, that God uses everyone. It may be to serve someone around you today. It may be to comfort someone. It may be to talk about the Bible and about God to someone. It also may be that that we are the person to be served. There's often something powerful in receiving as much as there is in sharing. All it takes is that we open ourselves up to the small little messages and things that are happening happening around us to see the people in need and to see where we have needs and to see and to letting others speak into our lives, either by us serving them or by them serving us. It was interesting, about the same time that I heard that, that message from our pastor about individuals who, who really want to talk about God, I saw a video of an atheist talking about Christians. And what he talked about is the fact that while he didn't agree, Christians believe that they have this, this wonderful message of salvation and forgiveness and eternal life, and yet often we don't share that message. And is that because we're afraid of, of feeling weird or, or hurting those relationships that we have? Um, I'm sure it's a lot of different things. But what he said was, in the words that he used, was hate. You know, how much do you have to hate someone that you have a message for them of salvation and you don't share it? And that really, it really struck me, is how often do we feel like we have, you know, something to share with somebody in a way that we can help them, and yet we shy away because we're afraid of, of uh, something. And so I guess my encouragement today for, for everyone would be to know that God has a purpose for you, know that God has a reason for all of us, and that we need to be open to his, to his calling and how we serve other people. So let me pray today. God, I thank you for for Landis and for the mission of Landis and for the people that live here, Lord. And I pray that you would be with all of us, Lord, in hearing your voice and in understanding your role for us today, tomorrow, and the future. Help us, Lord, to see those around us who have needs and that we would reach out to them and care for them and share with them, Lord. We ask you just to comfort those who need it, God to be with those who have concerns, Lord, and help us, Jesus, to reach out to them. Be with us all today through your son, Jesus. Amen.